I have a dream, God says. Please help me to realize it. It is a dream of a world whose ugliness and squalor and poverty, its war and hostility, its greed and harsh competitiveness, its alienation and disharmony are changed into their glorious counterparts. When there will be no more, when there will be more laughter, joy and peace, where there will be justice and goodness and compassion and love and caring and sharing. I have a dream that swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, that my children will know they are members of one family, the human family, God's family, my family. Therefore, sisters and brothers in Boulder Court, come let us celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord as we sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty. to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed dry land. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we gather today to give God thanks for the completion of another academic year and for the opportunity to celebrate with our graduates. We thank God for guiding them to the end of this phase of their journey and to pray that the light of His grace will shine upon them as they chart new beginnings. We hope that what they have learned within these sacred walls will allow them to truly be women and men for others. And what we have learned from them enable us to do the same. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, enlightened by your Holy Spirit, those who teach and those who learn, that are rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, and attaining the maturity of the truth of all persons, they may worship you. They may worship you.
the first three deep. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. This is the word of the Lord.
Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard, and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. This is the word of the Lord. I invite us to stand as we enter into a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your grace and power, your beauty and care. You sustain us daily and encourage us constantly. Thank you that there is no season of life when you are not present with us, Savior Divine. We thank you for this institution and for the vision of its founder. We praise you for those who over the years have contributed to the mission. We pray, guiding God, that you will strengthen them to keep fostering the hope of your people. Savior divine. Lord, we pray for the board of management for the academic, administrative, and the ancillary staff. We uphold all parents, caregivers, and in a special way, we pray for all students who take their journey here. Gracious God, may you enable them by your Holy Spirit to use their gifts and talents to serve one another in love. We ask that you bless Glenmuir High with instructors who recognize Jesus Christ as wisdom highest and noblest treasure, and with students who are committed to preparing themselves for public service. Savior Divine. We pray especially for our graduates who have successfully completed their course of study at this institution. May they be inspired to journey on in faith to fulfill your will and purpose for their lives. Save the divine. over the lives of all your people. Dispel our fears, strengthen us in our weakness, and finally bring us all to everlasting glory through the merits of Jesus Christ, 
your son, our Lord. The souls of the faithfully departed are in the hands of God where no harm can touch them. For they rest from their labor and are at peace with the Lord. Rest eternal grant your servants, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. The Lord's Prayer.
We continue to collect.
Okay, we ask our ushers to continue the collection as we proceed with the program as printed. So we invite our graduate who has been assigned to lead the graduate's prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may your hand be upon our graduates as they and their families celebrate this grand milestone. May they find strength in the excellence of their academic preparation as they join others in the ranks. Enable them to stay true to their truth for their greater glory, to discern what is right, good and just, and to use their gifts wisely and in service to others. Graduates, I ask you, what then are you waiting for? With all you say you want, there is a dream for you to follow, a goal for you to set, a plan for you to make, a project for you to begin, an idea for you to act on, a possibility for you to explore, an opportunity for you to grab, a choice for you to make, Could I ask you to pause just a little bit? Because you're saying the prayer like you're not sure. So let me just say that last phrase and then invite you to make your response. There is a choice for you to make. Therefore, may the blessings of God follow you always as you find new journeys to travel. May you walk safely along the paths, ways of your dream. Make his gentle hand guide the decisions you will make and the passions that you will follow. May your hearts and lives always reflect his love and the truth. And may hope be a light within you that you carry into each new day. Amen. Say that handover was very efficient, Reverend Byfield. It was so efficient that I wasn't really prepared. But then, um, you know, as I always say, I used to say it to my coach when I was playing tennis, and he wanted us to play points if I was ready, and I told him I was born ready. So um, I stepped up to the challenge and accepted the baton. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we move to the graduation ceremony. And I would like to start by, first of all, making some acknowledgements. Reverend Byfield, uh, guest, our guest speaker, Ms. Lisa Hanna, MP, members of the Board of Management of Demure High School who are here with us, His Worship the Mayor, Council Winston Moran, the principal of Glenmuir High School, Dr. Marsha Smalling, and her academic, administrative, and ancillary staff, other members of the head podium, if you want to call it that, parents, graduates, members of the media who are here, members of the Glenmuir family, friends of Glenmuir gathered here and those who are participating online. Mine is a privilege, even though I was not out, to chair these proceedings. It was imposed on me by Dr. Smalling, apparently. It goes with, with the territory. I discovered that last year when I came to the graduation ceremony and I was told, oh, by the way, you are the, the master of ceremonies. I didn't know that. But as I sat here this afternoon, Memories kind of flooded back to me because I came here a long time ago and I attended the schools. And if my memory serves me well, many of our functions were held in this, in this very same place. I certainly remember prize giving being held in this very same place. And so it has brought back, you know, a lot of memories about my beloved schools. Today, as I said, my role is really to move the proceedings along. But I thought it would be remiss of me if I didn't take the opportunity to just speak a few words to those of you who are about to graduate from this noble institution and to enter into the big wide world in a completely different role, in a completely different capacity. And, you know, as I sat there thinking about what I would say, a little, uh, what do you call it, a riddle that I heard some years ago came to mind. And the title of the riddle is Five Frogs on a Log. And, and it simply says this, that five frogs are sitting on a log, which is above a river, and three decide to jump off. And the question of the riddle is how many are left? Three decide to jump off. How many are left? Can I hear you? Five. You're, you're right, I don't know. I, didn't, I said two at the time. Right, five are left because what? They only decided. They only decided. And you know, it is important that all of us, but more particularly those of you graduating today, Realize that desire is just a starting point of achievement. It is important, but it is not sufficient on its own. Right? And in a real sense, it is important as you leave this institution that you continue to develop yourselves, your skills, your capabilities, your competences, very, but more, most importantly, your mindsets, right? Into the kind of thinking that will ensure that ultimately you will become a success. And there's another point which I love and I want to share it with you this afternoon because I think it is relevant to the occasion and it is relevant to the transition which you are about to make. Because many of you will be graduating to other institutions of learning and some of you will be graduating to environments of work. And the title of the, the, the poem is My Wage by a gentleman by the name of Jesse B. Rittenhouse. And it simply says that, and I quote, I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I beg that evening when I come to my scanty store. For life is a just employer, he gives you what you ask. And once you have set the wages, then you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn this maid that any wage I'd asked of life, life would have willingly paid. 
end of the quotation. Very simple, ladies and gentlemen. We are all the single most our attitude, right? The extent of the work and effort we are willing to put in. The extent of our ambition, the extent of our drive, commitment and enthusiasm are the most important determinants of the success that we will achieve. So I leave that with you this afternoon. I leave you to reflect on it, to think on it, to realize that there are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. So it is we who limit ourselves. And I close with my favorite quote in terms of my own um, the words to you. Quoting from the American architect Daniel Burnham when he said, and I quote, make no little plans. They have no magic, ladies and gentlemen, the spur men of blood. Make big plans. Aim high in hope and work. Recognizing that a noble logical diagram, once drawn, will never die. But long after we are gone, will be a living thing, asserting itself with ever increasing insistence. The summary of the message this afternoon, my friends, as you graduate, is that your future is really in your hands. All right, at this time, I'm going to invite the school choir. Every time I listen to the school choir, I am so proud of them. I am so impressed, I am so amazed. I listen to them this afternoon. So we, we are going to have the, the period of school choir coming up with a selection for us. Thank you. Thank you.
Mike Tech, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, public service announcement. Uh, a premium silver 1496 JB. The driver, you need to check on your vehicle. All right, that's premium silver 1496 JB. Please check on your vehicle. Okay, so next we are going to have our principal, Dr. Marsha Smolin, giving her remarks. Our Masters of Ceremony, Mr. Patrick Hilton, Reverend Byfield, or Distinguished Guest Speaker, Ms. Lisa Hanna, other distinguished guests, our esteemed graduates, the class of 2023. Members of the faculty, Members of the administrative and ancillary staff, our very supportive parents, all other distinguished guests, I greet you well. We gather today to celebrate an incredible milestone in the lives of these young men and women. I stand before you with a profound sense of awe, inspired by the relentless courage unwavering determination and unmatched brilliance that have brought each and every one of our graduates to this momentous occasion. As we bear witness to the culmination of five years of hard work, we cannot help but marvel at the extraordinary tapestry of achievements, dreams and aspirations that have been woven into the very fabric of our institution. In the face of adversity, our graduates have not merely survived, but thrived, leaving an indelible mark on our school's history and forging a legacy that will forever be remembered. Together, we stand at the precipice of a new dawn, where the tides of change are unstoppable, and the call to action is stronger than ever before. Our world needs visionaries, trailblazers, and champions. People like you, our esteemed graduates, our bright, intelligent, and polished scholars, who will rise to the occasion and shape the course of history for the betterment of humanity. And so, as we embark on this journey together, let us remember that the power to create a brighter tomorrow rests firmly in your hands. May you wield that power with wisdom, humility, and a heart full of hope as you go forth and write the next chapter of your lives. And in doing so, inspire others to do the same. I would like to share a Bible verse one that some of you may be able to predict, that encapsulates the spirit of today's celebration, taken from Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Over the past few days, I created the time to review all of our achievements for the academic year. It was awe-inspiring, not only because of the opportunities they created for us to celebrate and feel good, but because we had to collaboratively, diligently, prayerfully, and resiliently move through the maze of challenges to reach those achievements. Speaking of achievements, I am reminded of the African proverb it takes a village to raise a child. And I want to thank all the persons in our village who have contributed to our number one ranking as declared by Professor Orlando Patterson. You can clap. You should clap. 
it is a big deal. This day would not have been possible without the tireless efforts and unwavering support of our dedicated faculty and staff. And I know that you're hot and you want to go home and you want to hear the awards, but I want to recognize those persons I consider to be the foot soldiers, the persons who make us look good every day, our teachers, our, ma our master teacher, Mrs. Stephanie Blair Allen, our VPs, our guidance counselors, our HODs, our coordinators, our form teachers, members of the admin, ah, got you. Our admin staff, our ancillary staff, our ancillary staff, give them an extra something. As I watch them today in the sun fixing up, you know, we have to definitely recognize them. So foot soldiers, big up yourself. We want to also thank our school board, our esteemed school board, led by Mr. Patrick Hilton. Thank you board members for providing the resources and guidance that have enabled us to shape these young minds and help them reach their full potential. And we do have some members of our board on the platform, and I'll just ask them to stand, take a bow, smile with you, wave at you. Um, Miss Thomas, Mr. Clue, and Miss Brennan. Okay, thank you so much. I would also like to express our deepest gratitude to the parents and families of our graduates. Where are they, parents? Let me hear you. Thank you for entrusting us with the responsibility of nurturing, and it has been an honor to work alongside you on this journey. A special commendation goes to the graduation committee, who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make today's event a resounding success. Your dedication, Mr. Edwards, Trish, um, Denisha, Mr. Parkins, Mr. Gooden, I can't name everybody obviously, but put your hands together for them. <laughs> to our Parent Teachers, Teachers Association, Association, led by, by Mrs. Mrs. Francine, Francine Rules. Rules. She's, She's unavoidably absent today. today. But I want to thank the PTA for always being there. And when I say always, I mean always. So I want you to put your hands together and applaud them because encouragement seems later. To our sponsors and supporters, this year we needed you more than ever and you showed up when it mattered. And you know me. I'm going to talk about the good times, but I'm also going to talk about the not so good times because that's how we really grow. This year, financially, we had to be operating with a $10 million deficit in our budget. And that made things extremely difficult. Principal teachers had to be raising funds just to ensure that the co-curricular activities of the school and other activities went on smoothly. I want to thank National Self Serve, Mrs. Lorraine Cousins, National Commercial Bank, Juicy Patties, Zip Cafeteria, Mrs. Joy Roden, Sajikor Bank, Maurice Jerk, Ferson. If you see the football field, they are the ones who signed the MOU to maintain our football field. So when you leave, you can just take a glimpse down there. Mr. Carton Palmer, manager of the football program. Gold Dust Auto, Mrs. Chin, Mrs. Sandra Bailey, Michael Scott, owner of Chapleton Maroon, Mattressings Farm, Chairman Hilton, I know you don't want me to call your name, but you bailed me out a couple of times. So I have to thank you. Mr. George Clue, you bailed me out a couple of times. So I have to recognize you as well. The Alumni Associations, 
the Jamaica chapter, the Canadian chapter, the Florida chapter, the UK chapter, and the Friends of Glenmuir UK. We want to thank them for sponsoring the breakfast program, for the printers, for the multimedia projectors, for assisting in upgrading the netball court, and the list goes on. And to all the other persons who contributed in one way or the other, just know that we are eternally grateful for your support. <laughs> Graduation, ladies and gentlemen, is all about celebration. So let's slide into sharing with you what the feathers in our maroon cap represent. And we earned a lot of feathers in that cap. And let me just say before I start, some people may end up feeling disappointed because they, it is impossible to tell you all the achievements we have had. So I will only be summarizing. If you have not heard your name, do not add. We love you. We love you for adding value to the Glen Mayor brand. Let's go very quickly. One of the feathers represented excellence in dance. Where are the members from the Dance Society? The Dance Society earned seven gold medals and one silver medal in the JCDC Parish Finals and three gold medals in the National Finals. Let me just in pointing out that two members of the Dance Society are also recipients of academic honors. Other members are Sashon and We also had netball excellence. This year we created history netball when the senior and the junior team advanced to the finals of the ISA rural competitions. The senior team won the rural championship and went on to defeat St. Catherine High in the All-Island competition. Let us congratulate We commend the coaches, Mr. Ryan Reed and Ms. Annex Daly for working with them. Fentonian Henry. They are part of our graduating class today. In the U.S. Open ISCO World Championship, he is a first former, but you know we still have to mention that. Let me just switch back quickly to netball. Nikisha and Fentonian are currently training with the national under-18 netball. Excellence. This year, the Key Club earned the Distinguished Club Award for their outstanding service to their community. They donated four trips to the Lionel Town Hospital. And last weekend, they participated in the Cancer Society's Relay for Life. Members of the graduating class, Calissa, Demoya, and New Money Blackwood. <laughs> the under 16 football team advanced to the finals. They were defeated by St. Edward High School. They got to the finals. We have excellence in music. The Glenmere High School Choir, under the guidance of Director Andre Taylor, Student Director Ravi, I'm just going to stop it right there, Ravi, Faculty Advisors Mrs. Stephanie Blair Allen and Ms. Fiona Mullins, along with the Student Leadership of President Sidney Fraser and Remarkable impact at the JCDC Music Festival 2023. 
The school proudly presented a diverse repertoire of 19 pieces, featuring performances by students ranging from second to sixth form. This inclusive blend encompassed solos and captivating choral pieces. The Glenmuir High School Choir achieved notable success in the competition, earning seven gold medals, eight silver medals, and four bronze medals positioning the school as one of the top tenders. Moreover, Glenn Muir received three out of five national gold medals at the music final. Among the participants from the graduating class are Terelicia Anderson, Janeiro, Kiana Elson, Darian Nakok. We celebrated robotics excellence. Our team, led by Emilia McLeod and supervised by faculty advisors Kenton Webb and Zania Hall, earned the first Tech Alliance competition we did last year as well. Last year, you would recall that we earned that award plus the Connect Award. They also participated this year, just a couple weeks ago, in the Heart Trust World Skills Jamaica competition and they were placed first in the senior robotics. Tavoy Morrison, Dejon Cole, Rajay Dinal, and Emilia McLeod made up the team. We celebrated mathematics excellence. A number of our students demonstrated their mathematical prowess in various competitions this year. In the Mathematics Olympiad, Jovan Clou was third, and Lache Blake sixth. The following students earned the platinum in the Caribbean STEM Olympiad. Orvian Brown, Michaela McLean, Cornelia Bailey, they are six formers, but you can still clap them. We celebrated basketball excellence. Our basketballers, led by Coach Abrahams and Shirley, bounced their way to third place championships in both the under 14 and under 16 championships. Tajay was the top scorer in the and a member of the under 16 all star competition. Raheem Rowe, a sixth former, was named among the 2023 Jamaica Top 30 Boys High School prospects. We celebrated Global Change Makers Excellence. Members of the United Nations Club participated in the Change the World Mother United Nations Conference in New York. Six delegates participated and won four awards overall. Laura Williams of the graduation class won the Fair Play Award and the Game Changer Award. Gabriel Gibson, a fourth formal of grade 10, also received similar awards. We want to commend those who participated in cricket. Alex, where is the Those who participated and served us in cadets, where are our cadets and members? Those who participated in the social enterprise, where are those students? Awesome. And to all the other students, we celebrate you, we love you, and we appreciate you. And now, dear graduates, as you prepare to spread your wings and fly, I leave you with this charge. You are the architects of your own destiny. As you embark on this new chapter of your lives, remember the words of the great philosopher Socrates who said, The only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Embrace the unknown, for it is in the pursuit of knowledge that you will find the key to success. Do not be afraid to take risks. For as Henry Keller once said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Seek out new experiences and let curiosity be your guide. It is through adversity that we grow and learn. So when life throws you curveballs, do not be discouraged. Instead, rise to the challenge. 
and remember the words of Romans 5, 3 to 4. We also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. As you go forth and make your mark on the world, remember that true greatness lies in service to others. And in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Strive to make a difference in the lives of those around you, and you will find your own life is enriched beyond measure. I want for you to go forth, unleash your personal power, your personal potential, embrace what is out there for you, create opportunities, believe in yourself, believe in God, do not settle for mediocrity when mastery is within your reach. You are enough. You are already chosen. And I want for you to join me as we proclaim Flagrant Veritatis Studio, burning with a zeal for truth. God bless you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this time we're going to have a number of special presentations by the Genial Alumni Association, Florida Chapel, a valedictorian award. Distinguished guests on the platform, the graduating class of 2023, members of the academic, administrative, and ancillary staff of Glenmore High School, parents, friends, family, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my pleasure to represent Mr. Norman Archer, President of the Glenmore Alumni Association, Florida Chapter. I was working on the American accent, but I didn't quite get it, so I'm going to just stay Jamaican this afternoon. It is my pleasure to present, on behalf of the Glenmore Alumni Association Florida Chapter, the Valedictorian Award to Tuwala Hay. to the most outstanding student. Tuala, you have been a role model, a motivation and an inspiration to your peers. And for that, we truly want to commend you and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. On behalf of pleasure to present to you on behalf of the Glenmere Alumni Association Florida Chapter this special award. to all of us right all right we are going to have the introduction of our guest speaker ladies and gentlemen and to do that we invite Luan Morgan
I adopt the protocols observed and today I have the honor of introducing a remarkable individual who has not only mesmerized the world with her beauty and elegance but has also made a profound impact in the realm of politics and public service. Our guest speaker is a former beauty queen and she has captivated the hearts of millions during her reign. However, her journey did not end on the pageant stage. She became Jamaica's youngest female member of parliament when she was elected in 2007 to represent Southeast St. Anne. As the then Minister of Youth and Culture, she quickly made her mark as a protector of disadvantaged children earning her high favorability ratings among the Jamaican populace. But even she will tell you that there is still more to be done. She's a force to be reckoned with in the field of politics, where she has dedicated herself to making a meaningful difference in the lives of the people she serves. Throughout her career, she has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to public service and a deep understanding of the issues that affect her constituents. Her intelligence, charisma, and dedication have earned her the respect and constituents alike. As a politician, she has tirelessly advocated for social justice, for foreign affairs and trade, she provides constructive insight, analysis, and declarative policies for Jamaica's loyal opposition on bilateral trade for the benefit of all Jamaicans. This phenomenal woman's leadership extends beyond her political career. She has actively has made her a prominent figure in the realm of philanthropy and social activism. This was evident when she was appointed United Nations Development Program, UNDP, Goodwill Ambassador, and Rain. However, she's best known as a passionate act activist, helping marginalized people, women, and at-risk youth, a message she has championed since she was a teen. Ms. Hannah is also a loud advocate for maximizing the export of value-added goods and services into the global economy with the aim of reducing income inequality in Jamaica. Additionally, her accomplishments as a former beauty queen and politician are testaments to her versatility and determination. She has broken barriers and shattered stereotypes proving that one can excel in multiple arenas and make a lasting impact on society. Her inspiring journey serves an as an example for us all, reminding us of the power of determination, compassion, and leadership. She personifies the cliche, beauty with a purpose. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, please join me in giving a warm, welcome a warm round of applause as we welcome our esteemed guest speaker a wife a mother a leader in the people's national party not done yet a former cabinet minister of youth and culture a, a shadow minister of foreign affairs and trade and the four-term elected member of parliament for the constituency of South East St. Anne. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Lisa Hanna. Even I'm impressed by myself after she read that. I need to get that for my bio. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Patrick Hilton, your esteemed principal who convinced me to be here this afternoon, Dr. Smalling, members of the board of this great institution, because it is a great institution. No, seriously. Your Worship the Mayor of Clarendon Municipal Corporation, Councillor Winston Mirage, Reverend Byfield, teachers, members of the ancillary staff, members of the canteen staff, 
who are always very important in a high school. Parents, friends, family who are here so proud, filled with pride. And of course, the beautiful graduates sitting in front of us in your maroon and gold. A very, very hearty and pleasant good afternoon to you all. No man. I sat up on that stage melting. You know better say good afternoon better than that. And I imagine that most of you, it's cooling down. And one of the things I can tell you is some of us who sit on the platform, we see all kinds of different things. And my mind works very differently. And I was praying for the people under the mango tree that no mango never drop and leave them in their head. So I'm still praying for you that you look nice in your pretty clothes and all things will go equally. When I was asked to speak this afternoon, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to say to high school graduates. And I say that because you're at a very, very interesting age. You're at an age that is dynamic, that is enthusiastic, that is promising, and you've scored academically well in one of the best institutions that this country has at the secondary level. And that is, that is not a small feat. It comes with a tremendous amount of peer pressure and it comes with a tremendous amount of dedication and heart, especially for some of you who many times found it difficult, not only for transportation, but just financially. But you're here and you made it. So give yourselves a round of applause. And the truth is, Back in 1997, it was something that Apple said, that the people who are crazy enough, the crazy ones, are the ones who actually make it. They're the ones who actually think you, who maybe have a Mac or have access to an Apple phone or an iPod or, or iTunes, you will probably not realize that back at that time, apps from 14 products down to four and they revolutionized not only music, they revolutionized film, and they revolutionized photography. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, yeah, Lisa, I hear you, but how does that apply to us? It applies to you because fortune favors the bold. At that time, Apple was being compared to, and HP and Dell were going to overtake it. It, had, it was worth about 62 billion US dollars. Today, Apple is worth over 2 trillion US dollars. Now, that's a lot of money. And if your chairman was to tell you how much that is in terms of Jamaica's GDP, Apple could probably buy G Jamaica many, 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 many times. But as I said to you, how does that impact your life? How do experiences like this impact your life? Well, the truth is, is that it takes courage to do anything. And it favors the bowl. And sometimes I've learned in my life that courage, courage is difficult. It doesn't happen overnight. It comes with tremendous baptisms of fire. And sometimes it requires that you stand alone on your principles, especially when you believe in something. Especially when you know in your gut that it is right. The problem is, is that many of us were taught by your mothers and your fathers and your grandmothers, including me, that a bird in the hand is worth more than two in the bush. So hold what you have, because you're not quite sure what is out there. The problem is in that in this world that we're living in, you have to go out there. You're living in a global world. The technology that is in your hand already provides that. There was a time in my house when you had a special whatnot, for encyclopedias. So there was a guy who came around who sold Encyclopedia Britannica, and when you came to somebody's house, you knew it was a smart house if you saw A to Z. That man no longer has a job because Google is where it's at. And so times have changed. And as a mother of a 22-year-old who recently graduated from university, I had to go through some very compelling situations with him in university. And Alex, I think most of you know him because most of you probably see him on Instagram. 
Alex was a modest student in high school, president of the National Honor Society, president of the Model United Nations, all of these different things. He gets to university abroad and it lick him. And even though he graduated in the top 100 of his class, it was difficult. And why was it difficult? Because he's now competing against Asians, against Africans, against everyone who is coming to take jobs. And as a Jamaican coming from a three million society, he's coming up against people that are coming from larger societies who have experiences. And I remember, and I want to tell you the story, and if he tells you that I told you, tell him I didn't tell you. Because he hates when I talk about him. But I think it's important that I tell you. So when you get to your third year in university, in some universities, especially with the, with the major that you're doing, and he did finance, you start looking for internships. And you have to intern because it will then determine what happens to you when you graduate. And the internship process is difficult because now all of these Ivy League schools and everybody is competing for very small jobs in an environment that is globally going into recession. So he gets this internship at one of these very, very prestigious banking institutions. And it was amazing. The problem is the institution hired basically 10 of them from across universities overseas, just 10. Then they downsized and just took four, and he was shattered. And so, as his mother, I get the call. And if you know what it feels like, especially for, for those of you who have high honors and who are high achievers, rejection is never easy. If you're accustomed to getting 92 and you get 91 and a half, you go home and you go ball. Because you don't want the 91 and a half. Was to Alex if he got a B plus, the entire world would come to an end. And I would have to say to him, you have to understand that in this environment globally, people are not only looking for academics, they're looking for resilience, they're looking for strength, they're looking for common sense, and they're looking to see if you can get back up. So you need to get back up. So anyway, he goes through his, his blows through his final year. And now everybody is getting jobs because now in the States, you have Nepo babies, people whose parents can make a call, and you're going through the rounds. And these rounds, Patrick will tell you, are not easy. When you're doing rounds for Goldman Sachs and you're doing rounds for Morgan Stanley and these big mergers and acquisition firms and investment banks, you have eight rounds. And he would come down to the top two and they would choose the other person. And as a mother, I would get the call at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Mothers, you know how it goes. And the conversations. And I would have to say to him, Alex, you have to double down and you have to regroup. Because he had a plan, he had a vision, and he did not want me, his father, or anybody to make any calls on his behalf. Because I could have picked up the phone and called Patrick. Hey, but I didn't. And I watched this kid go through the rounds. I watched him get rejected. I watched him get back up. I watched him double down on his technicals. I watched him interview in the mirror on his own. I watched him really dig very, very deep. And even when he got rejected again, and I would go and I would see Alex's room with all of these papers up there in terms of what he had to memorize. And, and then he started analyzing, and then he started reaching out, and then he started networking. And today, on July 6th, he will be working for the number one global investment bank and advisor in mergers and acquisitions. And he did that on his own. The point I want to make to all of you is that you have it within you. Your parents are there to support you, to motivate you, but every single one of you sitting here got here on your acumen on your merit, on your drive, on your zeal, on your grit, on your determination, on the fact that you wanted more, that you were prepared to be hungry for it, that you wanted and you knew that you didn't know it all, so you had to push farther. Twyla, when you look at Twyla's 
averages. Poor me in her first form, 90, 92, 94. And even when you look at her fourth form and fifth form, and she's coming up with the 80s, but her cumulative average is there. And if you saw Twyla on the road, you probably look at this little girl and think, And that's something that you have to recognize. You never judge each other by your external appearances. It is what you have inside. So here are 10 lessons that I want to leave with you. Just 10. That will take you through, for those of you who are going to university, for those of you who are deciding to work, for those of you who are taking a gap year, for those of you who just don't know what you want to do yet, and that's okay. You know why? Because you're not an adult yet. And it's okay to take some time and figure it out. You're allowed to do that. Don't let anybody rush you and tell you that you have to do it right now. So here's 10 lessons for your transitioning life's journey. One, going to school is not only about passing exams or getting an academic degree. It's also about making connections, making friendships, and learning to have relationships, knowing that once in a while, you're going to get your heart broken. In the midst of flung flirtations along the way. And these are lessons that I've lived by in terms of my life and what I've created and I'm passing them on to you. Two, learn to balance your time, your budgets, your budgets. Your budgets, your budgets. So if you have $10 or $1,000 or $10,000, use it wisely, invest it. So balance your time, your budgets, your responsibilities, schoolwork, have time for your friends. And even though that might be difficult at the beginning, it will take practice to find a rhythm, but it is essential requirements for matriculation into adulthood. Three, difficult emotional experiences and navigate harsh opinions while staying on top of your studies or work will be main, a mainstay for maintaining your peace of mind and focus. It will also prevent you from making reactive and stupid decisions. In other words, if you get hit by something, mentally or emotionally, do not stay in it and think, oh my God, I can't believe she said that, or I can't believe he said that, and then you call 10 other people, and then you say, what do you mean? What do you think they meant by when they said this? And you meds it, and you meds it, and you meds it, until two weeks later, you're still meds in it, and everything is passing you by. What I'm suggesting that you do is look at the data. Look at what happened, analyze it properly, come to a decision, and once you make that decision, you draw a line and you step over it. Number four, spend time learning the difference between being obsessive and learning to let go of things that are toxic for your maturity and your long-term aspirational goals then have the courage to act accordingly. There will be people in your life in high school that you might not have in university. And there may be people in university that you might not carry with you after. And there may be situations that you might have to let go of. Don't tarry. If you feel that you must let go of them, let go of them quickly. They can't help you. So the adults know that, but they know it too late. <laughs> Allow yourself, number five, allow yourself some free time to have fun. It is more than okay to feel happy and good about yourself, even if it is by yourself. Let me repeat that. It's okay to be happy and be yourself, even if it is by yourself. You don't need a whole heap of people to feel happy, you know. Happiness actually comes from here. Once you have something that external that makes you happy, when it leaves, you get unhappy. Whether that is a boyfriend, or something materialistic, so learn to cultivate the happiness from within. Six, ensure you understand and consistently know who you are becoming. Accepting those things you love about yourself, influence you, 
or add value to the other people around you. If somebody or your friend or somebody keeps saying to you, you know, boy, Marsha, yourself and analyze yourself that there are maybe some red flags that you have to get rid of that are host, that are self-sabotaging, let them go. Because the biggest sabotagers sometimes are ourselves. Seven, study hard and achieve excellence to meet your goals in life. Being aware that you are competing against the world and not only your peers here in Jamaica. And it's a huge world out there. Eight, be patient with yourself. You're going to make mistakes, but those mistakes don't need to be repeated over and over. You're growing. Therefore, listen more, listen more, listen. May I beg you do? Listen before I talk. Listen more. It will lead to your learning and liberation over futile habitual actions. Nine, be greedy in your self-discipline and compliant when your body tells you to rest. It's when your body tells you to just go to sleep a little bit. Sleep. Rest. Rest your body. It is important. You have to rest. It is how you heal your mind and it is how you heal your tissues, your cells, and your muscles to go forward. Number 10, and finally, read avidly and diversely. This will help you to define your worldview and how you would like to add value to your family, your friends, your community, and your world. You see, the courage to think differently doesn't come overnight, it takes time. It comes with experience, it comes with adversity, it comes with baptisms of fire, and it comes with loss. But real self-growth begins in moments when we consciously break the fragile protective shell of our own understanding. Your shell is broken today because you're starting a new journey. Congratulations on the last five years. It has been a triumph. You stand here and you sit here and you'll be walking up here triumphant and free from Glenmuir but you're stepping. <laughs> but you now go to another path, whatever that is, that you will have to walk. Be courageous, be bold. Step out there like you own the world, you're a Jamaican. That's what we do. You have the best nationality in the world and I've traveled the world, so I know. Never feel inferior about Jamaica and being Jamaican. And also, gentlemen, may I beg on you, wherever you go in the world, clean your shoes, wear a belt. Ladies, make sure that you carry yourself with respect and elegance because it will take you far. Congratulations, I love you and all the best. What a beautiful speech. And so, so many nuggets. Right? The, the ten lessons, the importance of courage and boldness, all of which resonated. Thank you very much, Miss Hannah. And thank you, Doc. Good choice. <laughs> all right. We are now going to have another selection by the school choir. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, they have changed. <laughs> I, I, was, I was about to say I didn't see them.
make a move for the make a move and you make it move and see move and the truth Move it where you're not supposed to What you move and where you're moving to Who you move to move with the group Move the fool from half the avenue Move up on and boost the avenue Move up down and overlook the view Make a move and get from one to two Make a run move in the game and lose I stand up and I refuse to use Sometimes when me know me not my use Me to me to make me now me choose Moving on and still they need a glow Car keys are the only keys to move Moving on in Lord Thank you very much, Scoot, for I never failed to entertain us, eh? So, we are at the section, no ladies and gentlemen, where we're going to have the presentation of graduation certificates. And so, I'm going to invite Georgia McDonald Morrison and Sherry Gay Johnson to lead that process. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In French, this moment is called the piece de résistance or the showpiece event. So in any graduation ceremony, the symbolic distribution of students' achievement is usually the pinnacle. And of course, parents, relatives, well-wishers, and the graduates themselves look forward to this momentous occasion. As one of the FIFON coordinators, uh, the pleasure is all mine to be here to distribute these tokens of their achievement. And certainly, on behalf of the other FIFON coordinators, Miss Murray, Mrs. Graham Wright, Mr. Parkins, our beloved Vice Principal, Mr. Edwards, and our hardworking form teachers, Mr. Webb, Miss Fine. Then we have Miss Lohan Morgan. Then we have Mr. And then GLM, Mr. Robert Dean Edwards. Oh, I left out Miss Marcia Stewart, also assistant to. We are overjoyed to celebrate this moment with you. As I said, the pleasure is all mine. What say you, Mrs. Blair Allen, our professional MC? Thank you, Miss Edwards. It is indeed an honor to share the stage with you, my lovely colleague. I am Stephanie Blair Allen, teacher of Spanish to four of the six fifth form graduating classes. And our graduates have indeed bloomed from seeds to lovely plants of confidence, beauty, and knowledge. I am proud of you all. I now invite to center stage our presenter, alumna of this noble institution of the class of 86, 
former Miss Jamaica Festival Queen, the graceful and gorgeous Georgia McDonald Morrison. And we will begin with the graduates who have earned academic honors. This was no easy feat, and I'm sure that you all feel extremely proud of these 51 students. Now for the grand moment for which you all have been waiting, the graduating class of 2023. First up we have Marissa Barker. Rihanna Beeson. Or Valedictorian Twyla Haybent. Dominic Bursi. Jaheem Black. Natalia Blackwood. Matthews, 
also has outstanding achievement in dance society and rangers. Shade Makala. Latanya McDonald. Shania Miko. A little bit lower band, thank you. Next we have Zona Dre Morgan. Casia Nelson. Alana Osman. Jada Parchment. Kaylia Powell Abby Janae Reed Atia Robinson Janoya Robinson Janae Rowe, also with outstanding achievements in choir. Tasha Gay Russell. Nicholas Salmon, also with outstanding achievement in social enterprise. Octavia Salmon with outstanding achievement in social enterprise and the Spanish festival. Alia Smith. Akil Stewart. Tashika Thompson. Adrian. Laura Williams, also with outstanding achievement for Jam Society, Keyboard, Peer Educators, and the United Nations Youth Arm. Nadrana Williams. Brianna Williams. Last but definitely not least, a Johnny Wright. And those are the 51 students being awarded with their academic honors this evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next set of graduates continue to solidify Franklin Muir through their contributions in extracurricular involvement. So we'll start with Kiara Abrahams for Spanish Festival. Next we have uh, Taji Allen, Cricket. Next, Terralisa Anderson, The Choir. Natalia Bennett, Environmental Club. Jay Bursin, basketball. Dante DeCeso, basketball. New Mummy Blackwood, football. And Nisha Brown, 4H Club. 
Charlton, Charlton football. Amelia Chin, Dance Society. Kalisa Colburn, Key Club. Festival. Tajon Cummings Football. Tajon Cummings Football. Dawkins, peer educators. <laughs> to be followed by Dean Ed, oh, sorry, Ledria Ferran, Dance Society. To be followed by Daniel Harris, peer educators. Social Enterprise. Then we have Talisa Smith, Peer Educators. To be followed by Demoya Taylor Kito. Then we have after Demoya Lisa Simone Taylor. Orange Club. Jason White, outstanding footballer as well. And to conclude the outstanding awardees, we have Joel Young for his contributions to the club. And 
we're winding down nicely. Thank you very much, Mrs. McDonald Morrison. I now invite alumna of the class of 2019 and a former deputy head girl of Glenmuir High School. Miss Bailey Anika Bailey Samoya Bartley Rajiv Basaraj Aisha Bido <laughs> Joseph Beckford <laughs> Jada Bennett Tamar Blagrove A Zane Brown Followed by Glenroy Brown Pause for a moment for the photo optics. <laughs> Glenroy Brown. Followed by Jordan Brown. Next, we have Lamar Brown. Anika Brown. <laughs> Trudy Ann Brown. Chavin Buckner. Followed by Sanjali Bhagan. Rashid Chambers. Kevin Chang. Brian Cooper Next we have Wayana Daly Followed by Laura Dean David 
tête. Que John Dawkins. Followed by Daniel Dino. Jordan Douglas. <laughs> Ethan Edwards. <laughs> Malik Edwards. Jaden Erskine. Tahira Ellis. All right, so Jaden Erskine. Tahira Ellis. Followed by Christoph Folks. Let's pause for a moment. Jaden Herdsman. Followed by Tiara Holgate. Then we have Annalisha Hopwood. Tristel 
England. Akira Ledford. Roland Dean Lodge. Followed by Nathan Mannings. Up next is Janine Mirage. And we have Dwayne McCullough. Next, Rihanna McCullough. Then we have Tommy McLean. Followed by Jamelia McPherson. Chanel Morrison who's next. Followed by Gabriella Murray. Jordania Newman is next.
Next up, Brian Sharp. Ryan is followed by Elaine Shirley. After Elaine comes Shake One Simpson. Out this section, Lorian Small. We are winding down nicely. Next on stage, we have Javar Smith. Followed by Saskia Strong. Sine Thomas. Courtney Thomas. Followed by Krishmar Todd. Next we have Michaelia Turner. Gianna Wallace. Tamar Washington. Altricia Williams. Santimo Williams. Followed by Rashik Williams. by Tashay Williams. Then we have Elaine Wilson. Elaine Wilson. The journey has just begun. You are now official graduates of Glenmere High School. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of 
Ma non puoi dire pani che non è su a canti.
Miss Hannah, on behalf of Big Nanmere High School and the graduating class of 2023, I extend my um, heartfelt gratitude to you for your presentation today and for your message. We, the graduates, are truly grateful for your message and we present this token to you as an expression of thanks for your inspirational work. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the graduate song performed by these students coming up on the podium now. Let's welcome them.
I want to make a, a very quick announcement the number of vehicles that we need to drive up. This is like 1093 ZZ, 6800 FD, 9380 KR. Those three vehicles. And before we actually hear from our valedictorian, we're going to have our students doing a presentation to the presenters of the certificates. That is Ms. Georgia McDonald Morrison and Ms. Sherry B. Johnson. graduation day special and memorable. A simple thank you is not enough. Hence, on behalf of our Glenmuir family, I present to you this token of appreciation to show, to recognize your impact on making today a momentous one. You're a part of our Glenmuir family. Your warm smile and the charisma you displayed in the distribution of our certificate, without a doubt, was one of the most important things of this afternoon. It, was, it really was. On behalf of the graduating class of 2023, I thank you for your invaluable role you played in the ceremony. Please accept. Please accept this token of our appreciation and gratitude. Members of the board, our honored guest speaker, Ms. Lisa Hanna, principal, vice principals, members of the Glenmore family, other distinguished guests, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2023. Good evening. <laughs> it is indeed an honor to stand here today representing an extraordinary group of young people the Glenmuir High School graduating class of 2023. Today, as we stand on the frontier of our future as young adults, I glance back at the five years of our lives, realizing that these crucial years spent in this noble institution have satisfactorily prepared us 
for the sometimes ominous looking future that lies ahead. It is for this reason that I have tied to this presentation, reflecting, charging forward, the Glenmuir Empowerment. As we stand on the threshold of our high school journey's end, I'm filled with a mix of emotions. We have all shared laughter, tears, triumphs, and failures throughout these unforgettable years. We have grown together, challenged each other, and formed bonds that will undoubtedly stand the test of time. It is an honor to address you all today and reflect upon these incredible memories we have created in this remarkable place we call Glenmere High School. Ralph Waldo Emerson, an American writer, said, do not follow where the path may lead. Instead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. As high school students, we have strived to leave our unique imprints on the world. We have dared to dream big, pushing the boundaries of what is possible. We have taken risks, learned from our mistakes, and discovered our passions. Do you remember the nervousness and excitement of our first day of high school? <laughs> I do! We were first introduced to each other and this institution five years ago on June 27, 2018 at the Welcome and Torch Lighting Ceremony. We were like fresh pages in a book, waiting to be written upon. We were bubbling with excitement at having our dreams come true, yet simultaneously trembling with apprehension at being thrust into a sea of uncertainty. The corridors and classrooms echoed with the buzz of apprehension and anticipation. At that time, high school loomed over us like a formidable dragon, waiting for us to make one misstep. Through the guidance of our parents, guardians, and members of staff, particularly our form teachers, we endured the first form and handled our workload of 13 subjects like the champions we are. We were filled with promise and infinite possibilities. Listening to the calm voice of Dr. Smalling, our principal, helped alleviate some of our fears. And today, Glenmere has become home and our teachers are surrogate parents. Like any typical family, we have laughed, cried, and grown together. We have created many memories and we must cherish them. I'm sure we can all remember with clarity our first form teachers who showed us the ropes. <laughs> our appreciation to Mrs. Walters, Mrs. Corniff Williams, Mrs. Reed McLeod, Miss Bedward, Mr. Allen, and Mr. Webb. Our first introduction to Flagrant's Pride was during Glenmere's Diamond Anniversary celebrations. The Glenmere spirit was on full display as I remember the unforgettable march through the heart of Mayfair. We painted the town red as we celebrated 60 years of Glenmere excellence, an experience we were all so proud to be a part of. Glenmere has truly become our home away from home. How can we ever forget that legendary teacher's voice? Shh, 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 shh. Glenmere students must be polished. Her stern tone always served to keep her library, her kingdom, as quiet as possible. How can we ever forget the lengthy weekly journal devotions chaired by the world-renowned, energetic, and vivacious Sister Jen? She would try with all her vim and vigor every Monday or Tuesday morning to incite us to sing. But just as she succeeded in getting us to feel the devotion, our fervent and effervescent singing would plummet into sighs of exasperation as we were directed to turn our hymn books to the same hymn number every week. 
the Glenmere anthem, if you may. Shine, Jesus, shine. Kill this land. Ever forget the highlights of these devotions. The entrance of our principal, Dr. Smalley, as she would smile and say, Good morning, Glenmorites. I'm well. How are you? That always made us feel as if she truly cared about our well being. Sports days were always looked forward to. Not because we're unsure of who would win, as Daru was always winning every year. but rather for the spirit of camaraderie and brotherhood this occasion brought. And history was created during our five years when Muirhead <laughs> mustered up to strength to dethrone. I also remember the sports interform competitions and the competitiveness they arose in each one of us we made during break and lunch and how we cheered on our houses during Ice Dead Fud. I remember the cultural package competition. A celebration of culture and heritage. A time for classmates to bond over their shared love of music and dance. That memory though is tinged a little bitterness on my side as throughout the years my class never won. Second to last, sorry. Nevertheless, we had a fantastic time. All of the, these good memories ended, however, when COVID-19 attacked the world. I remember it as if it was yesterday, that fateful day, Thursday, March 12, 2020, when the government announced that all schools would be closed for 14 days in light of the growing pandemic. At the time, the notion of online schooling seemed a blessing, we were all overjoyed at what we thought would be a short break from school before returning to normal operations. This novelty quickly wore off as one week, two weeks turned to three, and before we knew it, we had completed both second and third forms. And months that would have spent in the classroom were instead spent in front of a device screen, listening into a several lesson at a table or in our beds, praying that we wouldn't be asked to turn on our cameras. <laughs> I'm of the belief that this experience truly proves just how resilient we are and that our presence here today shows the wisdom we have gained. It was a tumultuous period of adaption as we had to contend with the fundamental changes made in the way we were taught while grappling with the uncertainty of the world. To be able to adapt to the COVID-19 normal was not an easy feat. And for that, I believe we, the graduates, deserve a moment of applause. <laughs> While 13 subjects became nine, the workload and pressure to perform increased. With CSEC exams fast approaching, it was truly time to settle down. As we began our preparations, every minute counted and every second mattered. This situation was admittedly not ideal, with remote learning still in effect at such an important point in our lives, but we made the best of it. This exam season, we survived on three hours of sleep, or fell asleep in sofas, not at our sides long forgotten as exhaustion took over. After exams, some of us would watch videos of people solving the paper and beat ourselves with that one small mistake we made. It was difficult, it was draining, but at the end, we were relieved. We are finally finished. After five years, that dragon looms over us no more. We are free. But 
we didn't just focus on schoolwork. In sports, Alec Captain Alex Henry, Tajay Allen, Tishani Morgan, and Javar Smith will always be remembered for their Chris Gale-like escapades on the cricket pitch. Our ballers, New Money Blackwood, Dalton Charlton, Tajan Cummings, Jason White, and Michelle Thomas, always made us proud. Our netballers, Nikisha Powell, Pentonian Henry, Markeisha Lindsay, the All Island Champions. Our track stars, Dominic Borising and David Hansen. Our basketballers, Nikolai Johnson, Jonathan Newman, Dante Bisacer, and Tajay Borison. Our songbirds, Darian Makuk, Janae Rowe, Jovan Clue, Taralicia Anderson, Kiana Elson, and Joel Young. And how could we leave out the dancers? Sashona Nichols, Anthony Lea Matthews, Laurel Williams, Amelia Chin, and Ledger Farrell. These persons are only a few of the many students who stood out during our journey. Yes, the memories will be many, and we will miss this Globe Institution, Glenmere. But I say to the fellow graduates, in the words of Dr. Seuss, a famous writer, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Thanks to our teachers, parents, and all stakeholders who contributed to our development, we could not have done it on our own. Today, as we look back, we are encouraged, excited in fact, as we realize that this Glenmore experience has prepared us to face the future and empowered us to face the world out there. In and out of our classes, we have been taught that the purpose of this experience was not just to prepare us for exams, but also prepare us for life. To this end, we were imbued with the positive attitudes and values that will shape us into worthwhile citizens of society. Architects and construction workers will tell you that in erecting a building that is firm and able to stand the test of time, it is critical that the foundation be solid. In fact, Workers have to dig several feet into the ground to lay this foundation. Glenmere has given us our foundation and what a foundation it has been. Fellow graduates, I charge you to build on this foundation. Glenmere has equipped us with the skills needed for our passage through the next phase of our lives. Let us not be daunted by any challenges we may face ahead, but let us rather be inspired by these challenges to work even harder to achieve our goals. Let us go forth and be good ambassadors of this school as we seek to make our contribution to society. Let the world know what we stand for, what motivates us. Flagrans Veritatis Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. Victorian took us down memory lane and then left us with some inspiration. Another round of applause, please. I want to extend apologies on behalf of our guest speaker who had to leave us at this time. She asked me to convey her regrets in that regard. But we are grateful for her presence and for her contribution. 
At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the vote of thanks by Jaheen Black. It's true we're making out. It's true we're making out here. No way you say, dry your face for the days. But if you're better, you lose for the fears. Move me van stepping out. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow graduates, a pleasant night to you all. It was Gilbert Chesterton, English writer, who actually stated that when it comes to life, the critical thing is, whether you take things for granted or take them with gratitude. The graduating class of 2023 has chosen to take the critical things with gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, the maroon flag is flying high this evening, well, this night, symbolizing the fire which endlessly burns in the hearts of each and every graduate seated on this lawn. Therefore, on behalf of the graduating class of 2023, it gives me immense pleasure to extend gratitude to all participants and guests who have graced this joyous evening with their presence and made today's event a phenomenal success. First, I must begin by thanking the Most High God who has kept us safe. Who has kept us safe through all the challenges we have faced. Many were not so fortunate to grace today's event, so gratitude goes to the Almighty One above for allowing us to celebrate our achievements. Thank you, Lord, for making this evening possible. The Reverend Giovanni Byfield is most appreciated for offering spiritual guidance throughout the valedictory service. I would also like to acknowledge the Chairman of the Board of Management, Mr. Patrick Hilton, for having participated in this evening's celebration. Sincere gratitude to our now gone guest speaker, the Honorable Lisa Anna, a past and may I say still present beauty queen. <laughs> Though our world thrives on rapidly changing information, we assure you, Miss Anna, that we will treasure your wise and profound words as we continue to strive for our excellence. Utmost gratitude to our very own Miss Luan Morgan. <laughs> for so eloquently introducing the guest speaker. To the lovely ladies, former festival queens and past students, Mrs. Georgia McDonald Morrison and Miss Sergey Johnson. Thank you to these ladies who so graciously distributed our certificates and awards. I salute and thank you for making us feel special and appreciated. Sincere appreciation to the Glenmere Alumni Association, Florida chapter, for the special presentation. I must also extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have diligently guided us through our five-year tenure here at Glenmere. Our esteemed principal, Dr. Marsha Smalling, <laughs> must be thanked for an excellent job in managing this prestigious institution. She has consistently encouraged us to rise, which that is to, one, reflect, two, impact, three, serve, and four, evolve. We also thank our vice principals, Mr. Hayes and Mr. Edwards, for their diligence. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, in particular, as head of the graduation committee, must be commended for ably guiding the graduation proceedings. We must also express our gratitude to the various heads of departments and subject teachers for their vital contribution to our growth. Special thanks to our farm coordinators, our prior warrior, Miss Murray, Miss Edwards, 
Mrs. Graham Wright, and Mr. Parkins. They have always motivated us to one, reflect, two, impact, three, and four. Deepest gratitude to our Dean of Discipline, Mr. Richards, for always upholding the standards of this institution. Additionally, our appreciation to the guidance counselors, the nurse for being our caregiver in times of sickness, and the, and the administrative and ancillary staff for assisting wherever they could to ensure a clean and efficient learning environment. A vocal thank you is extended to the choir for their breathtaking performance. For their breathtaking performance and flair in making every event they grace enjoyable. An honorable mention is extended to the Juicy staff for providing us with what is appropriately termed as serious Jamaican food. For keeping us safe and protected, we salute the members of the security team. We also pay our respects to the creative minds and hands of the Glenmere Graduation Committee, decorators and photographers who came together to make this evening an extraordinary one. And now, an enormous thank you to our loudest cheerleaders, our beloved parents and guardians. They have dedicated their time, effort, and of course, finances to ensure that we made the best of our academic journey. Their love and sacrifice have enabled us to stand here today. This day is as much theirs as it is ours. Now finally, the class of 2023. Thank you to all my friends and schoolmates for an amazing high school experience. Our bond has created a zeal to push each other towards success as we embrace challenges and focus on our goals. I wish for everyone great success in all future endeavors and urge you all to remember, nobody's gonna break our stride. They slow us down. Oh no, we got to keep on moving. Now, I hope the actions of the class of 2023 have set the groundwork for the upcoming class of 2024. As we pass on the flag and button, we charge you to perform as well or even better than we did and continue to burn with flag and pride. As I conclude, let us give voice to our school's motto that has guided us through our five-year tenure and will continue to blaze a path for our future. In the words of Mr. Hales, our vice principal, let us say it with some oom. Now, after three, one, two, three, Flagrant's very tarty studio, burning with the zeal for our truth. Thank you. That's one of the, the, the longest worth of time to have experience, but it was good. All right, we're gonna have the school song. Yes, everybody ready to sing? Okay, so we're waiting on the choir. We're gonna be led by the choir.
come to an end and we are at the end of today's ceremony I want to thank everybody here to say overall thank you for all who have participated in whichever way whatever form we appreciate it you have made today's event a huge success and again to the graduates go forward and prosper
students who received academic honors and outstanding achievements to return to the platform now, please. Please do it very quickly.